Hey, hey guys, welcome to Talk About It Thursdays. I am your host, Karen Bailey. Let me know when you're on. I'd love to say hello. All right, you guys, let's go ahead and get started for today because y'all know how I am about your time and how I am about my own time. We have things to do, people to see. So first of all, let me thank everyone for the beautiful uh, birthday wishes. This was an amazing birthday. Uh, I love you guys and thank you so much for your support uh, to the page and just being there and commenting and just even just being there for other people, you know, on Sister I Got You. I thank you guys from the bottom of my heart uh, because that's the vision. That's the vision. The vision is other women, other men helping one another, loving one another, caring about one another. You know, we don't have to know each other's business, but we do need to have compassion and be able to care for one another. You guys, last week, my topic was, hmm, maybe it's me. And I hope you guys got something out of that. I hope, you know, that you understand what sister I got you. We may talk about what they did wrong, but we're definitely going to talk about what we're doing wrong as well. Because we want to evolve. We want to be better. We want to be the best version of ourselves that we can possibly be. And you guys, today... Our topic is the rose that grew through concrete. You know, Tupac Shakur did a poem um, relating to this, and he was talking about how you can come from the worst of situations and then, you know, how God can bless you and turn your life around. Well, that's what I want to talk about today, the rose that grew from concrete. And I want you guys to start seeing yourself as the rose. You know, you may not be perfect. You may not have it all together. But a lot of us, you know, we don't look like what we grew up in. We don't look like, you know, all the circumstances we had to grow through and survive. You know, give yourself credit for just how far you've grown, just how far uh, you've gotten in life, despite everything that's tried to stand in your way. So we are the rose that grew through concrete because how you see yourself matters. How you see yourself is how you portray yourself to the world. And that is in turn how people will treat you. So you have to see yourself as a conqueror. You have to see yourself as a survivor versus being a victim, you know, all the time. You know, see yourself as strong, even when you don't feel strong, see yourself as strong. Now, the concrete that we talk about, it symbolizes stability, strength, something that's permanent, solid, a foundation. And when we talk about the rose, we're talking about just the, the many ways that someone can become something great even though they come from a place that's considered not so great. So that's why I want y'all to embrace yourselves. I want you guys to start patting yourselves on the back. I want you guys to start believing in yourself because a lot of us have gone through so much and maybe people don't know about it, but you know about it. You know and God knows what you've gone through. So make sure that you're understanding that you are a conqueror. You are not a victim. So what I want you guys to take away from my topic today is that beauty and strength can emerge from some unlikely places. You don't have to have it all together. You don't have to have to come from wealth. You don't have to come from influence in order for your life to turn out right. You know, some of us have to take a few more curves, a few more turns, a few more detours than other people, you know, that have things planned out and have the ways prepared for them, you know, whether it be through family, this or that. But we have to understand just because we had to do it a different way, just because we had to do it 
a harder way. Just because it's taken us longer to get to where other people have gotten to, don't count us out. Don't count us out. We're still the rose that grew through concrete. So today, we need to celebrate the fact that we don't look like what we've been through. Some of you guys have been through hell and high water, and you don't look like it. God has blessed you. God promises us some things if we trust him. That's why it's so important to learn the promises of God, because you're not doing it for nothing. You're not going through anything for nothing. There's something on the other side. So get in your word and learn those promises of God so that you can strengthen yourself and, and know that, you know, while I'm having to go through this, while while things aren't working out the way I expected them to, while I'm having to wait, while I'm having to be patient, while I'm having to have faith, there's a blessing on the other side. Because it's truly not where you start, you guys. It's definitely all about the finish that counts. Because everybody didn't get the same start. But you can have the finish that you want for your life, regardless of where you start. And the rose is a plant or a flower that can bloom a lot of times despite a whole lot of things. You know, I had some rose bushes outside, and I will admit, you guys... I don't take care of them, but every year they bloom in spite of me, in spite of my neglect, in spite of me not getting out there watering and fertilizing the soil and this, that, and the other. So just understand you're resilient. You're stronger than you think you are. So the rose blooms eventually, you know, despite, number one, the lack of care, like I just said, it blooms in spite of if it has somebody caring for it. You know, sometimes you have to maintain and survive in an unfertile environment. Sometimes you have to be your own motivation. Sometimes nobody's on your side but you and God. And you have to be okay with that. That's why you have to learn how to encourage yourself. You have to learn how to put your trust in God because there are going to be times in your life where it seems like nobody's really on your side and it's all about you and God working that thing out. And you're going to have to be able to hang in there and do what you need to do. And sometimes, you guys, we just hook up with the wrong people, point blank. Sometimes we just spend time and energy and and we worry and, and we love hard with people that don't deserve it. So it's not that there's anything wrong with you. Sometimes we just connect with the wrong people, you guys. And sometimes that causes us not to have the care and the love that we deserve. But we still bloom. We still survive. And then we can't use that as an excuse. You know, when people have handled us incorrectly, you guys, that's part of our past. Don't let that be that crutch, that thing that you hold on to that makes you say, oh, I don't want to be in another relationship. Oh, I don't want to try this. I don't want to try that again. Don't don't allow life to deprive you of the joys of life because everybody's not the same. Everybody doesn't have the same spirit. You know, sometimes we tend to start feeling sorry for ourselves when relationships don't work and friendships don't work. Understand that people have to move on sometimes. Sometimes that's part of God's plan for our life, that that some of the people in our life, they move on. They're not there to stay. They're not supposed to uh, be with you, you know, for your whole life. So you have to be okay with the fact that sometimes people aren't meant, you know, to stay in your life. And you got to be cool with that. And you got to not have resentment. You've got to not have hard feelings about it. And just know that if God allowed them to leave, it was their time to go. And then there are times where, you know, because of the lack of care, because uh, we don't get what we need in an emotional sense. Sometimes we go through a drought. Sometimes we go through a time where our... Um, emotional tank is empty, you guys. And it's really hard, almost impossible to pour from an empty cup, you guys. You know, your your emotional 
um, side of you, that, that emotional cup that you have, is what you drink from to access that place of peace, you know, to rest, to recharge, you know, to just get you going again. And when you're empty, you know, you're going to feel it. You're going to know it. Things are going to be off because you might feel that you're being pulled in a bunch of directions and just really don't know what to do. Confusion uh, comes into play, stress, uh, anxiety, restlessness, being resentful or bitter. You know, all of those things come from having an empty cup, having um, no one to pour into you emotionally and give you the love that you know that you deserve. So sometimes we have to even grow through that, you guys, because sometimes people really don't know how to love you. When people don't really understand you and when they don't take time to get to know you, there's a lot of times where they won't know how to love you properly. And then you can be in a relationship and still feel empty and still feel like you're, you're not being fulfilled emotionally. And then being spiritually empty, you guys, you know, when that happens, you know, just from not being cared for properly, not being prayed for, not being mentored, not being sheltered and covered, you know, by somebody, you know, you feel, you feel drained, you feel tired, you feel less optimistic, um, you are easily discouraged, and sometimes you can even feel hopeless and fall into depression. But some of us have gone through that and we're still going. We're still blooming. So you can bloom through that. You just have to keep pushing and you just got to want it. Because life is not always going to give you the right people at the right time. And God is not always going to allow you to depend on other people for what you need. Because he's put some things inside of each and every one of us. And he's going to want you to tap into those things from time to time because he knows what's in you. So you're going to have to learn how to tap into all of that that God has placed inside you. And the rose sometimes even has to bloom, you guys. Number two, with lack of support. You know, we don't always get the support that we need or that we deserve, you guys. It's not personal. Some people don't know how to be supportive. It's some people, you know, have so much jealous, uh, jealousy and, and that jealous spirit in their heart to where it won't allow them to support you because they're envious because they're not you. That has nothing to do with you. That's something they need to work out. But sometimes you have to even blossom through that, especially when it's your family and your friends that are supposed to love you, care for you, and want what's best for you. Sometimes you don't get that support, but you can't give up just because you don't have that from them. And then sometimes, you guys, there are social boundaries. You know, you have to grow through that as well, you know, despite your up upbringing, whether you were brought up in poverty or abuse or violence, you have to choose, you guys, to grow through that. Don't allow that to stop you from being as great as you know that you need to be. You know, those things happen. There's nothing you can do about it. A lot of those things weren't even in your control. But you have to have the tenacity. You have to have the will. You have to remind yourself that regardless of what happened to me, regardless of what I had to see, what I had to go through, I'm still a rose. I'm still beautiful. I'm still strong, you know, and I'm going to grow through this. I'm not going to let this hold me back and keep me tangled up. You know, you can get caught up in vines, you know, rose vines, you know, don't allow yourself to be caught up. You know, it's fine. Blossom up. Don't, don't go sideways worrying about what you did and didn't have. The answer is to keep going up and don't ever stop trying to go up. And society sometimes tries to to chain you and limit you. You know, sometimes it's because of your race. Sometimes it's because of your gender, because of your financial status. You have to decide that I'm doing this for me. Don't do it for anybody else. Don't do it for the husband. Don't do it for the kids. When there's a time in your life when you want to grow, when you want to become the best person you could possibly be, you've got to do that for you because you know 
that you're not living up to your full potential. No matter how we fake and shake, no matter how we smile and, and put on a show, deep inside we all know when we can be better than where we are right now. And the concrete in the text, it represents that place, that hard place that nobody believes anything good can come out of. And when I think of concrete, I think of people that came out of, you know, the hood or the ghetto or people that came out of prison and they turned their life around and they made something great of themselves. They they became productive. They became business owners. They became, you know, speakers and leaders, this, that, and the other. You have to decide that nothing, no matter how hard it is, no matter how solid it looks, no matter if nobody stands behind you, you have to decide that you want to be the rose. You want to be the one that makes it to the other side. You want to be the, the exception to the rule. But you have to push yourself and you have to want that for yourself. And not having anybody to confide in, you guys, you know, that's a lack of support. When you don't have anybody that you can share those intimate things with, somebody that you can share your joys and your pains with, it makes it hard. But it doesn't have to limit you. When you don't have that in your life right now, it may require you to build your own support system. It may require you to step out there and find people that are already going through what you're going through. Join some different groups, support groups outside of your circle, outside of your family, and get with people that that know what you're going through. Get with people that don't have any preconceived notions about you. Sometimes God wants you to get away from what's familiar, because what's familiar is not, not always what's best for you. And as the rose, we have to blossom through even the lack of opportunities. You still got to blossom. No, you didn't have what she had. No, you didn't come from a two-parent home. No, you didn't have this. No, you didn't have that. But you have to decide that I'm going to defy the odds. They can call me a black sheep if they want to, but I'm going to persevere. I'm going to make it for myself, not for anybody else, not trying to impress anybody, not trying to get on social media and brag about what I've got and what I've done. Do it for you. Do it for you. Because sometimes you're not even expected to win. Let them be surprised. I have learned, I have learned that it's okay when people talk about you. It's okay when people put you down because all that does is give God more ammunition because they do that to you, because they disrespect you, because they say what you can't do. If you're a believer and you're trusting in God and you believe in God said that you could do all things through Christ who strengthens you, stand back and watch. Stand back and watch. God will lift you up. He will raise you up. He will elevate you in front of all of those people that mistreated you, that didn't love you right, that talked about you, that didn't give you a chance when you were trying to, to move up, when they looked down their nose at you. Don't hate them. Just understand that you serve a God that he likes the underdog. You serve a God that he can turn anything around. So sometimes with the lack of opportunities, you still have to blossom. You got to choose to blossom, even when you come through those hard places. And those small opportunities, you guys, take every small opportunity that comes your way. Don't look at anything as too small. That may be a gift from God. That may be God trying to elevate you. But when you've got it in your mind that you're better than this and that's too small for you or, or, or you're beyond doing this, doing that, sometimes you miss your blessing because God likes people who are humble. God likes people that don't mind being a servant first before they move up into a leadership position. So, so don't despise those little small things, those small opportunities God sends your way. And when you start using the gifts that God gives you and he's put deep inside of you, 
you can't help but succeed despite what anybody tries to do, despite who talks about you, despite who doesn't uh, support you. When you start using the gifts that God gave you, God is going to make a way out of no way. And understand that greatness can rise from any adverse situation. That's why it's so important that you look at those things in your past and look at it and try to find the lesson instead of going on and on about who did what, who hurt me, who wasn't there for me, you know, who took money from me, who did blah, blah, blah. Don't get bitter. Make it your point to get better. You don't have to get revenge on anybody. The best revenge you can ever get on somebody is to do better to blossom, to be that rose that grows through the concrete. Because sometimes people are the concrete that try to block you. There's nothing better than that person having to look up at you or that person having to, to see you winning and try to keep a straight face and try to keep from acting like they're jealous. Let God elevate you. You don't have to worry about people that didn't do you right. Move on. Be happy and enjoy your life. And you have to want to break through any type of barrier that's put in front of you. Because it's that important that you become the person you know you're supposed to be. And even when you make bad decisions, y'all, it's never too late to turn your life around. Don't ever think that you've done too much or, or what you've done is too bad. God will help you turn it around. You got to want to turn it around and you've got to have a sincere heart about changing your life and understand that a bad past should not have to dictate how you choose to spend your future. And that's why you have to let go of resentment, unforgiveness, bitterness, all of that stuff. Because that has no place in where you're going. And you have to make up your mind that where you're going is bigger than where you've been. And learn to speak over yourself daily. You know, a lot of times we don't believe we have the power to do some of the things we want to do. But understand that God has the power. That he is your strength. And recite Philippians 4 and 13 to yourself every day when you're looking in the mirror when you're getting your makeup on or doing your hair or men if you're shaving or whatever remind yourself I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me and you have to believe that believe that and you guys we got to get to a point where we are beyond just ordinary Resilience. You know, resilience is the process of adapting well in the face of adversity, trauma, tragedy, or stress. You know, but we have to understand that as children of God, we are called to be beyond that. We're the example for other people. And sometimes we have to bloom in the dark sometimes. It's not always going to be pretty sometimes, but somebody's always watching you. And that's what I always try to tell everybody. Don't ever think there's not a set of eyes on you just because you don't see them. Somebody's watching you. And that's why it's so important what you do in those times when things aren't going right in your life. Because somebody needs to see you being an example of how to hold on and how to be strong and how to be beyond resilient. And here's some ways to do that. Number one, don't try to get through the darkness alone. You know, so many people are going through hard things and they don't want to talk to anybody about it. They get to themselves and getting to yourself, being alone and not having somebody pour into you or show you some compassion. You're going to stay in that dark place a whole lot longer than you have to. We need to get and stay connected to others, especially, especially you guys in difficult times. And the enemy loves for you to get by yourself because he's trying to prolong the darkness in your life. When you get around other people, that light is going to come in. Even when that situation hasn't changed, somewhere 
that light is going to get in and you're going to feel better and you're going to know that I'm going to make it through this, you know. So you have to understand that sometimes we have to bloom in the dark. Number two, don't bounce back to the same place you were before. When you bounce back from a bad situation, when you come back, come back different. Come back different. And that's another topic we'll talk about. But don't go back to being exactly where you were when you've fallen down or when you've had a setback. Come back and go beyond that. Be better than that. Number three, have something positive to show for all your effort. Think of the time you spent suffering and struggling. Think of that as an investment. What did you learn while you were going through, while you were struggling, while you were suffering? That's an investment in the character of the person you are today. God won't waste your time. God is very concerned about time. He's not going to waste your time. Always know that anything that's happened in your life has happened for a reason. God has a reason for everything that happens in each and every one of our lives. And you guys, another way to become beyond resilient is always create that next thing. Always be planning that next thing so that you can stay excited. So you'll have something to hope for. So you'll have something to look forward to. Number four, understand that sometimes the dark is required in order for you to grow to your full potential. Sometimes God has to take you to that place. Sometimes that trial, that suffering, that loss, that up and down that we go through in life causes you to get closer to God. Sometimes it humbles you. Sometimes it shows you who's really on your side and who's your friend and who's not. Sometimes God needs to do that to open your eyes to some things. Number uh, five, we must refuse to let adversity define who we are or what our dreams are going to be. Number six, remember you are unique. You are rare. You are beautiful because you didn't give up, because you grew through it. You're here because you kept going. You're here because you decided, I'm not giving up. I know I went through that. I know it hurt. I know it set me back. But I'm keeping it going. I'm moving through because I know there's something better for me. Number seven, don't let your struggles and your failures define you. You are not them. It was just what you had to grow through. Number eight, don't let your past outrun your future. Do not let your past come up here and go past your future. Leave that stuff in the past. Cut some of that stuff off, some of them conversations off. Leave your past in the past. You've got things you got to do. The past is what you've already done, whether you failed at it or you were successful. That is your past. Your future has enough stuff for you to do. Do not allow your past to run past your future. And you guys, my final thought for today is we get knocked down. All of us do. Time and time again in this life. But we still rise. We have to. We got to be stronger. We got to be more resilient than before. So stop counting how many times you get knocked down. Start keeping count of all the times that God helped you get back up. God always helped us get back up. Because we are the rose that grew through concrete. You guys, thank you so much for watching. Uh, let's say a quick prayer. Father God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the month of May. We are excited about, you know, just the things you're going to do in our future. God, help us to leave the past in the past and get excited about what's next in our lives, Father God. Help us to understand that you have been with us then and you will be with us now. And no matter what obstacles come our way, you're going to help us to grow through it. There's nothing too hard for you. And God, we ask that you just continue to remind us that we can do all things 
through you. And God, we thank you. We love you. And we, we ask that you just continue to cover us and bless us and keep us. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you guys for watching. I love you guys. Uh, have a great rest of the day and a wonderful weekend. See you next week. Bye. Talk to you later. Bye.